All right. We have a pretty cool work of art to look at tonight. We're going to look at the work of uh, Gay and Wilson. And normally I'm looking at fine art, fine art paintings. And I like to score the uh, fine art. But today we're going to take a look at a cartoonist, an illustrator, a brilliant comedian, if you will. And look at uh, some humorous work, because I think we need a little humor in our life. And the thing that the corona has given us is creativity. Lots and lots of people are expressing incredible amounts of creativity, as well as humor. And so um, that's what we're going to look at. Mr. Wilson just passed away in 2019. Uh, he used to do cartoons in the New Yorker and Playboy. And I know you always hear uh, guys always saying, I, I, I collect Playboy just for the articles. Well, in my case, it was for the cartoons. I promise. Um, so the way that we're going to score a work of art is we use the nine value system. So when I ask a question, if you don't feel that that question applies, for example, if there's, uh, you know, great structure and you're like, no, it doesn't really have that great structure. Um, I don't really feel a sense of a good structure. Then you would say no and no would, then you would ask yourself, okay, well, is that a high no or a low no or, or, or mid, uh, medium no. And so therefore you would put a number according to it. And so you have nine numbers, nine values, and you'll be able to give your macro opinion and then fine tune that and give your micro opinion. So yes, kinda or no, and then high, middle, or low. So grab yourself a piece of paper, grab yourself a pencil, and let's get started. Boom. So I find this illustration quite brilliant, um, this cartoon. And uh, so let's ask the first question. Does it have a great sense of structure? Do you feel that the artist, in this case, the cartoonist, had uh, some idea of design and composition, bringing order to the piece? Uh, is there a sense of construction and, and forethought in that? Or do you feel it was kind of just uh, haphazardly done, accidental or unplanned? Uh, for me, I do feel that there's, a, a, there's structure. Um, I'm not gonna give it the height of structure as a masterwork, um, but for a cartoon, it's extremely structured and very, very well thought out. And so I'm gonna say yes, but I'm gonna give it a, a, a low yes, a seven, okay? Now what you're gonna realize is that you can use a system, it doesn't matter what the artwork is. You might like the kind of artwork it is, you might not like the kind of artwork it is, and that's okay. But using uh, the art scoring system, you're able to um, evaluate a work of art, even if it's not your kind of art that you like. But you can look at the merit of the work itself and make a determination. And so let's take a look at struck, um, saturation, the color. Do you feel that the artist had a deliberate use of color? Or do you feel that it, it kind of lacks a sensitivity or strong color? Um, control. I think his color is very general and very um, okay. Um, and so he is using color intelligently. I like how he uses the blues to create this nighttime feel. He's um, contrast, he's juxtaposed that against this, this um, orangey, peachy flesh, the blonde hair, I love the little red eyeballs of Dracula. And, uh, and so these are, these are really cool. These, this is really, really nice stuff. Um, and so I actually give it a seven. I could probably go a little lower than a seven. Um, some people might go a little higher. I'm gonna stay with a seven, but I, I, I might even go down to a six. So when we look at the shade, the values, is he controlling his values? 
is there are distinctions between what's light and what's dark. And as you look through the image here and we take out the, the color, you can see that every object in the image has its own identity and that it's not blurring away into uh, into the background or into the object next to it. Even Dracula's hair, um, you can see how it's a lighter value than the background. And so those kinds of sensitivities are very, very, very important. You can see the bum of the woman here and how he puts a nice highlight on there. It doesn't really make sense to have a highlight there, but it uh, does for the image so that you can see that this is this beautiful voluptuous woman. Now, with the voluptuousness of her, I think part of the humor in this picture is if you notice her neck and her traps and her shoulder and her head and her hair and all of her facial structures, very, very curvy and, 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 and feminine in this way, but also by having these uh, curves that are moving outward like that, it shows that she's alive and she has blood pumping through her and whatever is underneath her skin is, is yummy and, and full of life. She's full of life, you know? And it's funny, as I say this, my hands are kind of looking a little like Dracula's hands right now. And, and he's putting a little salt on that neck, you know? And uh, it'd be kind of funny if he had a little lime in the other hand, but um, that was a different time. But uh, he's salting it before he bites into this luscious meal for, for his night. And so in terms of sh uh, shade and value, I actually give him a number seven. That could, again, maybe even go up to an eight. But I think a seven is a fair number. So now we want to look at space. As our eye starts at the top left-hand corner and it moves down and it comes up around, our eye fairly moves um, really, really nicely. I like how he uses these shapes. In this case, he's using the uh, curtains because um, Dracula comes in from the window. He's using these curtains, but it's really something that uh, uh, Gayen likes to do is to use these curves in his image. And as your eye moves through them, it really does create um, a fantastic mood, right? It's like a very eerie mood and so as your eye comes through here he's like mm, ha, 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 ha. it comes down and then he has this beautiful uh, high contrast here that brings us into her head that she's sleeping you really feel her pushing down into the pillow and your eye comes up through here and across through here and so as it transitions even his signature is it's bold enough to see but it's kind of hidden into the work and so our eye moves across and up and then we come into the into this darkness of him. And again, we're coming back down into where the salt is. I like how he has the shapes in the space above Dracula. Um, this gets a little harsher here. You're, 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 he wants us to know that it's nighttime, that the moon is out, that he's come through that window. That's very, very important. These angles are extremely important in the, in the design of this uh, composition. But it might be a little too strong, okay? Because um, my eye does get trapped up in here a little bit, but once it gets to this uh, window opening, it creates a strong diagonal that pulls me right down. I like how it pulls me right down into the mouth of Dracula. Uh, and so you actually feel the, <laughs> the like the, his mouth opening up wide like a snake, you know, biting into the side of a, of a, of a little helpless mouse. And so I gave him actually a number nine for space. It could be maybe an eight as I go back and reevaluate it, but I'll give him a nine. Now in terms of soul, this is an interesting one. Obviously he's a cartoonist. He's not really overly concerned with trying to capture the way things look uh, he's trying to capture a mood, a feeling, and so he's far more concerned with capturing that energy of the moment, that humor in the moment, and this to me really, really uh, illustrates the soul. He does it. He brilliantly does it. You can actually even feel with the this, this shape coming down in the curtains, almost like his hand shaking that salt onto that voluptuous rounded neck. And you see how that rounded neck then is repeated into his cape, um, repeated up here into his cape. I mean, she's just uh, 
just all over, just so rounded and curvy. Um, he's he's ready to 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 bite into this succulent meal. And so I end up giving it a nine for soul. I think it it really has nothing to do with trying to capture all the details. And um, and I also like the way he uses his pen work in the hatching techniques. It really adds this really, really nice energy uh, to, to the work. Now, style. I think uh, it's very clear that he has a very clear artistic voice. He has... Um, a unique skill set. Now, is it fully new, uh, unique? I don't know. And, and so, therefore, I'm going to give it an eight uh, because I think his style is very, very clear. We know it's him. Uh, he's able to express himself clearly, his ideas clearly through the, the style that he has. Um, but at the same time, I've seen other people do this kind of style. And what I don't know at this time, to be quite honest, is did they copy him and he was an original in this style? Or or does this kind of style just manifest when you're doing this kind of work? And so I'll give him an eight. So I do think he has the ability uh, that he has an artistic voice, that he has a unique approach and skill set. Um, but it wouldn't be a high yes. It would be about a middle yes. Now you might give it a high yes. You might give it a low. You might say, eh, kind of. You might say no. That's up to you, okay? His skill sets. is Does he have um, a clear ability and command over his artistic medium? I'm going to say yes, he has a clear control over his medium. I would find that his medium is probably much more the pen um, and not so much the, the coloring. Um, I'm, I'm, it looks like watercolor. Um, and so, it, you know, he's kind of, you know, you want to lower that value if you feel like it's been rushed or it's unfinished. And to be quite honest, I don't feel that this is finished. I do feel it was kind of, you know, the color, um, the medium, I should say, was put on there you know, just to kind of fill it in and, 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 and finish it off. His pen work, though, requires a lot more time, a lot more delicate uh, sensitivities. And so ultimately, I said, yes, he does have skill, but I had to give him a low. And that really could even be a five or a six if I wanted to go back and put it in that direction. So I think seven is fair. So in the end, once we add them all up, we get a 54. We divide it by 63 because it's only the seven that we're looking at. If I was doing this professionally uh, for um, a museum or a collector or a buyer or an artist who wanted me to evaluate their artwork, then I would do it on a 14, uh, a, a scale of 14 factors, not just seven. But these are the seven that I'm choosing to do. And so you can see this curve where his his structure, his saturation, his shade are a little lower, his space and his soul is high, his style is a little higher and his skill is uh, a little lower. Now what's interesting about that is that means that he's doing well in all of these aspects, but he is much more of a feeling artist, a heart artist as we would say, someone who's uh, creating the artwork from his heart, from his imagination, his passion, and he has the, a style that he's developed over time. And so that's where these two, these three uh, higher uh, bars tell us, right? And so what we're saying with these lower bars, these first three is that he's, intellig he's an intelligent artist. He knows what he's doing, but he's not relying on uh, producing his work as a cognitive analytical uh, expression. It's much more of an emotional uh, expression and that's why his space has is very very well the soul in the work is very well his style his artistic voice is high um, but overall he's a really really great artist an incredible communicator and funny 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 and because he's so funny I brought you a little treat let's look at a few other works by Mr. Galen so here are two more Dracula Dracula uh, 
illustrations. I love how in this first one we have, if you look at the curves here of the, uh, of the bat at the top, coming through, coming through, he has this motif, this, this edge that's coming through the, um, uh, that's coming through the, uh, through the chair or the bench. And if you allow your eye to go through that, it's a very, very almost weirdly spooky type of movement. It's like, woo, right? If you could put sound to it. And I like how the bats come in. Obviously the humor here, you know, is he's feeding them like an old man in a park would feed his birds or maybe Don Victor would feed pigeons in Portugal. Um, my father raises pigeons. And when I was in Portugal, I was missing home. And so I would go and get some bread from the, from the from the bakeries and and go out and just kind of feed the pigeons uh and it would make me feel a little close to being home and so i found that really really funny this second one is hilarious it says uh cursed daylight savings time and <laughs> and here's dracula out late at night used to come in home you know at six in the morning but oh my gosh five in the morning now the sun came up right because the time changed and um and I just found <laughs> that to be really, really funny. That, that was funny. Um, these are a little, you know, little, a little cool. Um, this one here with all the people going to heaven, they have the little angel, angel stuff. You look up here, the heaven sign is missing the E. There's a beer can up here. You know, all this dirt and debris on the ground, like beer, you know, bottles and, cigarette uh matches and this guy's picking his teeth and it's all falling all over his belly and this guy's sneezing and and the little tagline at the bottom is somehow i thought uh the whole thing would be a little a little classier <laughs> and so i thought that was brilliant and then obviously this little flashing santa claus and uh the police officer says but i can't arrest him lady not on christmas eve and uh and so i thought that was kind of funny um but these two are brilliant too um i don't know if you've ever had if you have children or if you remember when you had children you have guests come over and there are things that your kids would do that was totally fine as long as nobody saw them right it's just kept it in the house and you kind of gave grace but the the, the rule was you just don't do that when guests come over and so you can see all the people partying in the background. And, uh, and this guy's like, I've told you, not when company's here. And so this dragon-y creature, beast, monster is trying to come downstairs. And how many times have we thought, oh, my God, or, <laughs> if anyone sees our children doing that, they'll think it's a, we have a monster. We're raising a monster. And I love how this, the, this diagonal comes right out of his eye right straight up like he's giving him the dad death stare like don't you dare bring that down here and embarrass me in front of all these people uh i love it the humor the just the real lifeness of it and this last one i just thought was absolutely brilliant i loved it i love the vignette this darkness that's coming around that's curving around the edges i love the high contrast of this knife against this dark here but obviously your main contrast is in this uh, uh, eye exam and the eye exam reads i am an insane eye doctor and i'm going to kill you now as you sit there reading this and <laughs> i just I, I don't know the humor behind that i just i i enjoy it's it's kind of dark it's kind of funny um in terms of design i love how he manages his signature so it's not so, so it's not robbing from the uh from the composition he's controlling his values extremely well the energy of this guy is just kind of like a dope doo -doo 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 -doo, you know just doing what he's supposed to be doing and this guy is like all bent out of shape and you know mangled and warped and crazy and insane but one thing i do love is all of the hatching that's going on in these shadows right you can feel this ear almost like like the shadow is creeping in onto this guy and he you know he's about he's looking at the last bit of life and light that he's going to see and um and so i just think it's creepy it's beautiful it's brilliant 
It's highly intelligent. Uh, the way that it's formed and what it's communicating, it's just downright fun. So if you're watching this on uh, Facebook, please go ahead and like the video. Do write a comment. I want to know what your scores were. Uh, and also share this. Let other people know about it. We want to get the idea uh, we, at the Academy of Composition. We want to get people to be able to talk about artwork, see artwork, and talk about it in a very, very different way. And I want everyone, you know, not just um, the art elite and the college kids and the atelier kids and the art professionals, but anyone and everyone, because we all love art. And during this crazy corona time, we've realized that uh, creativity and comedy, um, really there are three C's, you know, there's either, you're either complaining about something or you're creating something and you're kind of engaging in some kind of comedy because creativity and comedy um, by making a little humor of something that's not, shouldn't be humorous, it kind of uh, pulls the fangs out of the vampire and, get, and, and, and gives us courage to deal with it. And creativity is beautiful because with all of this pent up energy, you can either put it into complaining or creating. And, um, and I've been absolutely floored and, and just proud to be a human being to watch the incredible amounts of creativity that has come out of this time, as well as the, the humor that has come out of this time. And hopefully when we get out of this uh, Corona quarantini, uh, we go back into our lives and we bring that with us. We, we cherish the creativity, we cherish the arts, we cherish the intent, uh, entertainment industry. And we also cherish our comedians. You know, for the last couple of years, they have gone through a very hard time with everybody being so overly sensitive about things. And so it's kind of nice to kind of come back and see the importance of creativity and comedy. Because if you don't have it, then all you sit around do is complain and, and, and try to make company in misery. And that's not cool. So if you're on Facebook, leave me a comment. <clears throat> about what you think about the video, share it, like it. If you're on YouTube, do subscribe, hit the notification bell, and tell me what you scored this work as. And again, on Instagram, go ahead and follow us at the Academy of Composition. Leave a comment, share with your friends. And as we say, boom, Bella. Talk to you later. <laughs>